All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, and um, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Just wanted to take a few moments to tell you about what we got here. I uh, have I've gone back to a black canvas today, and uh, we're going to do kind of a, I guess you'd say a swampy river scene on here and what, what I've done is um, cover the canvas with uh, black gesso of course this is um, a 16 by 20 canvas it was it was double primed uh, with white gesso and uh, I simply painted put a couple of coats of black on it and uh, also uh, on top of that I have put uh, a thin coat of sap green on here. So I'll just cover the entire canvas with sap green. So I just want to make sure that it's on there pretty even. Just make a couple of horizontal and vertical strokes. It looks like it's covered pretty good. So I, I do apologize for the lighting. It's late in the day, and of course I have my my camera pointed towards the window, so in lieu of moving everything uh, we're just going to go with what we got so pretty basic palette today um, I've got a uh, titanium white cad yellow uh, burn umber van dyke brown and of course the sap green that I use so but we're going to be mostly using uh, the cad yellow for this so, and we're going to be using a uh, fan brush, a liner brush, and some knife work, but mostly a lot of this is going to be done with a, um, with a fan brush, so. But I was, I was trying to think of uh, a few things to do, and I, I did this particular painting, um, in December which is when I first started painting and uh, wanted to go back and uh, do that again try it again so uh, we'll give it a shot so like I said all this is covered with a sap green and I think what I'm gonna do as an afterthought, let's get a little bit, just a touch of Van Dyke Brown and put in the corners to kind of darken them up a little bit. So I'm going to use the same two inch brush uh, that I used to put the sap green on and just get a little bit of Van Dyke Brown put it in those corners. Just to darken them up a little bit. So basically what we're going to do, if I can find my fan brush again, is kind of going to put a uh, some trees loosely in the background because we're going to have water uh, all down here some still water so uh, just going to grab a little bit of cad yellow not much because that yellow was really going to mix with that green and uh, just use the corner 
just the very corner of the brush. Like some basic tree shapes. some dark spots in there to add depth. You can see that black canvas really makes it makes it pop out there. Take long. Doesn't take long to before you got a forest going here. Trying to figure out which way you can see it best. Yeah, I'll use my little small brush. Mostly fan brushes we're using. Always good to leave those little dark spots in there because that that will give you depth in your in your painting. It's kind of very very loosely. Like I say, we just want an indication of some wooded areas in the background. I'm going to go back over this with a big brush and uh, kind of hypnotize this whole thing. Probably not an artistic term, hypnotize, but that's what we're going to use today. Canvas is a very 
I really make any color you put on them pop. So. Alright, and if it's if it's a little bit too bright for you, you can always go back with your big brush and just kind of mop the edge of it off a little bit. I'm gonna leave a few highlights in there. We just kind of want to make it look all look distant. Don't need too much, too much definition. And you can make this just as dark or, or as light as you want to. Looks like there's a little bush should live right down here. Yeah, I remember uh, the first time I did this one, and uh, it was probably one of the first black canvases I've done. I was truly amazed at the effect you can get uh, by mixing these colors with a with a. Uh, different background. And then if you want to, you can take your uh, palette knife and kind of just put a couple of indications of some branches back there, what have you. Could be hard to see. That's pretty much the background we're going to go with. And that green really jumps off of that page, off of that uh, canvas with that yellow. So what I'm going to do is get some Van Dyke Brown and some Burn Umber, maybe a little bit of white. Just pull it out flat. Make me a little shoreline here. Kind of have something for all this to be growing on. You do it however you want to. There's no right and wrong. Just let the canvas take what paint it wants. And I think about that Pascagoula River. And there's some areas back there 
to make you think you're in a different world. Different country anyway. work for you. Almost a a chocolatey cover, but we're gonna color, but we're gonna add a little bit of white to it to set it off a little bit. been a while since I've done a video online so I figured what better what better time than this Labor Day weekend especially as much rain as we've been getting ain't much to do outside kind of shut the set that little shoreline off right there Really just want to give you a basic idea. Go back in with your cadmium yellow. Kind of highlight that shoreline a little bit. Do that, that's when the magic happens. So we'll make some water real quick. Just take that and pull it down, pull it straight down. Just that quick. Just that quick. You got you some water. Just gotta make sure you pull it straight down. Don't do it like I do. Take a little bit more of this brown and maybe put me some trees back here. Add a little interest to it. size tree on back here. Really no right way or wrong way to do this. 
Yeah, I made some old limbs on my tree. I guess instead of being out on the water this Labor Day weekend, this is a whole lot safer option. Probably cost a lot less too. The further, further forward we get, the uh, more detail we're going to add in. Let's see here. A small fan brush. Me a few little bushes in there. I bet there's a woolly bugger lives back there. Quite a little scene going on here. Maybe add back in a few water lines here. This is probably a lot safer alternative than being out in that water on this weekend. All right. Make that land come around. The 
Just add in what you want. Tell them what we're going to have over here on this side. Tell you what we'll do. We'll put a big tree on this other side. what you call your bravery test. Yes. Take a little titanium white. to give us some highlights. Really want that almost to almost like you can feel the bark on it.
trick is to highlight just one side. That's a what? I don't. I don't know if it's an oak or a water oak. I'm sure there'll be several opinions on exactly what it is. Yes, do one little limb at a time. And leave those those dark areas in there. I have a tendency to overdo pretty much everything, so a little I don't think we got enough highlights, so. Looks okay to me. There's another little tree over on this side, sitting on this island. I'm kind of going to have him lean over a little bit too.
I can promise you there's probably a big old bass. Or gar or turtle in here somewhere. Paint thing on that. A little moss hanging off of there. Let's see. Let me put me some small yellow highlights over here. You can get carried away with these too. I usually do. If that's what makes you happy, do it. I like the water lines. I'll just let that paint break. If you get too much on there like I just did, keep working that pallet knife, it'll work its way out. Alright, I'm liking the way it's coming along. Just a couple of little. things in the background there. Mm. Have this little tree way off in the distance there. things to the foreground. I might be having a hard time seeing that. There we go. 
Now you can see it. I'm not high tech enough to move this uh, video camera, so I'll simply move the picture instead. Let's add some land down here. Kind of gets quiet over here on this side. Good thing about painting, you can add whatever you want, however you like it. And even better thing about painting nature is there's no right and wrong. Gotta make that look sandy a little bit. That's squared up back there. That looks better. I'm going to leave this dark over here. Leave it alone. We got quite a little river scene going on here, y'all. Yeah? We'll take some paint thinner. Some of this burnt sienna. Thin it out quite a bit. This makes a little indications of some things happening in the foreground. Kind of adds interest to it. I want to make the trunk of this tree a little bit more prominent too. Add a little bit of that dark color to the back side. Just tap it. Let the canvas take what it wants.
All right, so we got uh, a working swamp scene here. But uh, the reason I was painting this is I was thinking about something that represented Mississippi. And uh, think about my time on the river and what have you. Um, and what that should look like. And uh, I think, I hope that this is a fair representation. But what I did was uh, before I put the black gesso on and the sap green, I put a yellow acrylic and uh, the state of Mississippi right here. So let's uh, see if we can make this happen. So that is our Mississippi, or as close as I could come to it with an exacto knife. So I think what I want to do is uh, lower this back down. And you can pretty, uh, what I did was took some contact paper and uh, cut it out. I don't think it's going to let me lower it. Man, somebody come in here and tighten that thing with pliers. There it goes. Just going to soften up the edges on this a little bit. my brush off. Just take that hard edge off of there. Give me five minutes. Okay.
Let's take the limb off of that. Limb off of that oak and bring it on in. Take a couple of our little bushes down here. Mississippi. And everybody's interpretation is a little bit different. But that's as close as I can get. I know that Mississippi River winds around pretty good. A lot of curves. That was about as close as I could get to it. Cut the edge of our state off there. I didn't want it to, I wanted it to stand out, but 
but I didn't want to. Look like it didn't belong. That's kind of why I added some foliage and stuff in there. And I don't think it would have. It would have looked right. Uh, just with that gold look. yellow to, to pop up against that gold so <coughs> excuse me Indications of some trunks back there. I think we almost need a little bush down here at the bottom. rather see if I can brighten that up put me a little grass up here There's so many little things you can do. I can sit here and think of things all day, little highlights. But I won't bore y'all anymore. That's uh, a little Mississippi swamp land. And uh, been a very, very enjoyable paint. I want to thank y'all for being here to watch me paint it. So you can pretty much do that with any state. Just take you some contact paper and cut it out. 
when you're getting ready, peel it off and paint over it. So I appreciate it very much. I'll have a good night.